This week on The Wire, lack of land drives up prices, economy firing two years into pandemic, and ANZ drops rates matches Westpac. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest, and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening this week in real estate, finance, investment, and more. Now kicking it off with our top story for this week, a lack of land drives up prices. So land price increases have hit their highest level since 2006, with new figures revealing supply is struggling to keep up with demand. Now the HIA CoreLogic Residential Land Report on sales in 51 housing markets across Australia shows that in the year to September 2021, the median price of land increased 12.6%. Now, HIA economist Angela Lillicrap says the median price of residential land in Greater Sydney increased 32%. Land will be the biggest constraint on building activity over the next couple of years, she said. The current shortage of land will impact the industry at a time when the broader economy needs construction to help pull it forward. Now, land prices increased 14.7% in the combined capital cities and 8.6% in the combined regional areas. CoreLogic Head of Research Tim Lawless says the surge into prices is not surprising given the huge demand from the federal government's home builder grants. And now guys, moving on to our next story. So economy firing two years into pandemic. So with the second anniversary of COVID's arrival in Australia upon us, Australia's economy is firing more than it was before the pandemic hit. Australia's recorded its first case of COVID on 25th of January 2020, and with that came predictions of an economic crisis. Now, while there have been bumps along the way, the economy has bounced back in many ways, including low unemployment, surging house prices, and record stock values. Now, Stephen Hamilton, a visiting fellow at the Australian National University's Tax and Transport Policy Institute, says the economy looks better coming out of COVID than it did heading in. He says unemployment is 4.2% now compared with 5.3% January 2020. House prices have increased by about 30% and the ASX 200 is currently sitting just below 7,000 points. Now, while there are plenty of silver linings, according to Hamilton, there are also been enormous costs imposed on individuals and businesses. Financial stimulus used to help boost the economy, which has added a trillion dollars to our national debt. And now guys, moving on to our final story of the week. ANZ drops rates and matches Westpac. So the competition for home loan business continues with ANZ the latest lender to drop its variable rate. Now the bank dropped its rate by 0.2% for new customers, depending on the size of their deposit. And customers with a 30% deposit will pay 2.19% interest, while those with a 20% deposit will pay 2.29% interest. Now, City Rate Research Director Sally Tyndall says the move by ANZ means it is now matched Westpac in having the lowest variable rate among the big banks. Fixed rates might be on the rise, but competition in the variable market is still alive and kicking, she says. Now, Rate City Analysis found there are 72 variable rates of less than 2%. And the most competitive rates are mostly on offer now for new customers, although Athena this week dropped its rates for new and existing customers. Now, Reduce Home Loans is offering the lowest variable rate this week of 1.77% on a 20% deposit. And some analysts are tipping an interest rate rise this year, despite the RBA repeatedly saying it isn't likely to lift the official interest rate until 2024. Well, guys, they are the top stories happening this week. Now, please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Have a great week, and remember, there's only the one thing in life that makes a difference. That's action. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.